Today's lesson is on Shays' Rebellion and the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation. This involves the period directly after the uh, Revolution. And we were, a, we were a new country and we were governed by the Articles of Confederation, which had some weaknesses. One of those weaknesses was there was no common currency. Another was there was no standing army. And this involved the difficulty in collecting debts it led to uh, bankruptcies and foreclosures of farmers, and it led to social unrest and violent upheavals by the citizenry who were not happy about the way our country was being governed. This was largely because we had a very weak central government under the Articles of Confederation. Because of this, our America was divided. We were a house divided. On one side, we had Alexander Hamilton, and Alexander Hamilton led what were called the Federalists. The Federalists believed in a strong central government, a government uh, uh, that had uh, powers to enforce debts, powers to uh, have a standing army, among other things. And because of this, uh, they were called the Federalists. The Federalists came mostly from the North, and they were financially backed by bankers and investors who wanted a strong central government to create interstate commerce across the states and to enforce those debts. On the other side was led by Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson led what were then called the Republican Democrats, and they were different from the Republicans and Democrats today, but they believed in a relatively weak central government that was only there for defending the nation against foreign intruders and a few other limited powers but they wanted our country governed by states and individuals governing themselves through voluntary association. They came mostly from the South and the West, and they were mostly farmers and landowners uh, that uh, wanted these uh, a weaker central government. So uh, because of these problems, uh, we had a, a historic event called Shays Rebellion. Shays Rebellion was led by Daniel Shays. Daniel Shays was an American Revolutionary War hero. He was a small farmer in rural Massachusetts, and he took up cause with about 4,000 armed, private, uh, riotous people called the Shayites. The Shayites were all mostly small farmers. Many of them had been exposed to bankruptcy and foreclosure actions, and they wanted to start another revolution. They weren't happy with the way the country was being governed, and because of that, they wanted to start another revolution to change our form of government. The Shayites first attacked courthouses. This was extremely important because courthouses were debts were, were put in place by bankers and other people. So if you wanted to collect a debt and the person wasn't paying, for instance, a farmer, you had to go to court and get a court judgment against that farmer. So the Shayites wanted to shut down all the courthouses uh, to prevent bankruptcies and foreclosures. And they were largely successful. Uh, this then led uh, to a, a major event, which was the attack on the Springfield Armory. The Springfield Armory uh, was the nation's uh, central depository for arms during the Revolutionary War. In fact, it was uh, a major armory for our nation through many wars for 200 years up until the Vietnam War. It was located in Springfield, Massachusetts, and the Shayzites wanted to get access to those arms to cause a broader revolution across the country and to up, upset the, uh, the balance of power between the northern interests and those who were foreclosing on their farms. The Shayzites then attacked the Springfield Armory, uh, but they were uh, put down, this rebellion was put down by a private militia organized by the state of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth it was called, and they put down the rebellion. But it led to a cry for a constitutional convention, and George Washington even came out of retirement because he was concerned that the country was not going to survive. So this call for a con constitutional convention was designed to rewrite the Articles of Confederation and create a more stable government. Uh, it was led by James Madison. 
James Madison organized the convention in Philadelphia. He talked various states into sending the delegations, and he also importantly talked George Washington into coming out of retirement to preside over the convention because he was the only person in the country that really had the credible uh, persona to unify our country. Uh, at the Constitutional Convention, James Madison uh, was known as the father of the Constitution. Not only did he organize the, the convention, talk George Washington into coming and also talking states and descending delegations, but he wrote most of the words of our present day Constitution that has served us so well and created a stable representative democracy. Uh, this led then to a stronger federal government, a federal government that had uh, th that had a standing army, that had a common common cur uh, currency, and made it for a more stable government. This then is Shays' Rebellion, and an important event in our nation's history. 